Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. I'm going to answer a question now from a Solomon paper, Solomon F, from the old C4 collection, which uh, corresponds to the P4 of the new specification. This is question number one from Solomon F, C4, which is question seven from my P4 end of topic worksheet on differentiation, which is chapter five from the P4 book. Um, this is a question about um, implicit differentiation. It says a curve has the equation 2x squared plus xy minus y squared plus 18 equals 0. We've got to find the coordinates of the point where the tangent to the curve is parallel to the x-axis. Okay, parallel to the x-axis. All right, so in this particular case, if it says it's parallel to the x-axis, then the gradient of this curve is going to be 0. Okay, so what we have to do here is we have to first, it says where the tangent of the curve is parallel to the x-axis. Now, if you look at um, your pair of axes, then you have your y-axis is vertical, your x-axis is horizontal. Okay, so if the tangent to the curve is parallel to the x-axis, then the gradient is zero. So we've got to find the coordinates of the points where dy dx is equal to zero. So first we need to find dy dx. Now, this is the type of an equation uh, where it's difficult to make y the subject because you've got a y term, then you've got a y squared term as well. So in, instead of um, you know, making y the subject and finding dy dx, we have an alternative method called implicit differentiation, where we differentiate each term separately. So just like if I had, for example, y equals 2x squared minus x plus 4, all right, and what we normally say is, okay, we've got to differentiate this. So we say dy dx equals 4x minus 1. Actually, what we're doing is this. Okay, this is how we normally work you know, from P1 and P2 and whatever, even P3. But what we're actually doing is this. We are differentiating both sides of the equation with respect to x. So I'm differentiating both sides of this equation with respect to x. We don't write this down, but this is what we're actually doing. Okay, this is what we're actually doing. What we're doing to one side of the equation, we're doing the exact same thing to the other side. Okay, so when we have something like this, this is what we do. So what's the differential? Let's do this. So what we're actually doing is this. We got So we got dy, differentiate that with respect to x, and we're taking each of these terms separate, separately. So we got to take 2x squared and differentiate that with respect to x, and we've got to take the x, differentiate that with respect to x, and we take the 4, and we differentiate that with respect to x. That's actually what we're doing. We're taking each of these terms and differentiating them with respect to x. And we're taking this y and also differentiating with respect to x. So if we differentiate these with respect to x, we're going to get 4x minus 1 plus 0. Okay, when you differentiate something like this, you multiply by the power, take 1 from the power, x term you lose the the x and you're left with the coefficient and then a constant 10 becomes zero now what we're doing here is we're differentiating y with respect to x now y is some sort of function of x as we can see so what you do is you differentiate as normal so you say one times y okay and you take one from the power so you're left with one okay and then you have to multiply by the differential of what's inside the function, just like when we have the chain rule. If I had something like, for example, x cubed plus 4 to the power of 3, and I differentiate that, I multiply by the power, and then I take 1 from the power, and then I multiply by the differential of what's inside the function, which is 3x. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply by the power and take 1 from the power, so I have 1 times y to the power of 0, which is basically just 1. And then I multiply by the differential of what's inside the function. Inside the function is y. What's the differential of y with respect to x? Well, it's dy dx. So you end up with dy dx equals 4x minus 1. Now, explaining something like that in P1 would be kind of like a bit pointless, all right? But that's actually what we're doing when we are differentiating. We're differentiating every single term with respect to x. And when we differentiate y with respect to x, we get dy dx, okay? When we differentiate 2x squared with respect to x, we get 4x. When we differentiate minus x with respect to x, we get minus 1. And 4 with respect to x, we get 0. That's actually what we're doing when we are differentiating something like that. That's the, these steps we don't write down. 
we don't want any of them we go straight from here to there and that's perfectly fine okay but this gives you an understanding hopefully of what implicit differentiation is all about okay so when we di when we use dif implicit differentiation what we're going to do is we're going to differentiate each of these terms separately with respect to x so you're going to differentiate 2x squared with respect to x you're going to get 4x you're going to differentiate um, x y with respect to x now this is where we have to think about this is a product of two factors so we're going to use the product rule so we're going to have u equals x and we're going to have v equals y so we're going to have the in differential of u is equal to 1 and the differential of v is equal to well if you differentiate y with respect to x you get 1 times dy dx the differential of y with respect to x is dy dx okay so then we're going to use the um the, pro the product rule so you have y times 1 which is y plus x times dy dx okay so you multiply across like this and then you got to differentiate minus 2y with minus y squared with respect to x now if you differentiate minus y squared with respect to x differentiating this part gives you 2 times y it's like y is like a function um you know if, uh, this y is like a function of x you could say so you differentiate this you're going to get 2 times y to the power of 1 then you multiply because of the chain rule by the differential of what's inside the function so you differentiate by the differential of y which is dy dx we kind of did the same thing here when we did 2x squared we did uh, 4 times x to the power of 1 times the differential of what's inside the function well if you differentiate what's if you differentiate x with respect to x you just get 1 so you end up with 4x so for this for, for the y it was y to the power of 1 1 times y to the power of 0 which is 1 times the differential what's inside the function that gives us dy dx okay that was uh, sorry that was this part here right and if you differentiate 2 y squared with respect to x you get 2 times y okay 2 times y to the power of 1 then multiplied by the differential of what's inside the function so you have to write dy dx so the bottom line is whenever you're differentiating something with respect to f x and it's a y term you always write after you differentiate it like normally dy dx and if you differentiate 80 with respect to x you're going to get zero and zero with respect to x will also be zero constants will give you zero when you differentiate them so now i have got um you know i have differentiated every term with respect to x now i need an expression for dy dx so i'm going to make dy dx the subject of this formula now i could do it by subtracting 4x and y from both sides but it's going to have minus 4x and minus y so what i'm going to do is i'm going to leave the 4x plus y on this side and the dy dx terms i'll uh, basically um, add 2y dy dx to this both sides that gives me 2y dy dx on this side and subtract x dy dx from both sides so i'll have minus x dy dx so i've chosen this side for the dy dx's and this side for the non dy dx terms now what i can do is i can factorize out dy dx as a common factor and i've got 2y minus x and now i can continue by dividing both sides by 2y minus x so i'm left with this as my expression for dy dx so i have 4x plus y over 2y minus x is what dy dx is equal to okay now we want to know when it's parallel to the x-axis when it's parallel to the x-axis that means dy dx is equal to zero so i can say 4x plus y over 2y minus x is equal to zero so therefore we can say 4x plus y equals 0 so we could say here if you want that y is equal to negative 4x so how do i find the point okay well the points where y equals negative 4x well what i do is okay so i've got to find the points on this curve where y is equal to negative 4x those will be the points where the gradient is equal to zero so i can solve these two equations simultaneously how do you solve a pair of equations simultaneously some people say you equate them no you don't equate them i can't say this is equal to negative 4x no 
you don't equate them that's not actually what you're doing when they're both y equals something and the other one's y equals something it looks like you're equating them uh, you know because they're both equal to y but what you're doing is you substitute one equation into the other so i'm going to substitute y equals minus 4x into this equation i'll replace the y with minus 4x so i'll have 2x squared plus x times instead of y i'm going to put minus 4x um, minus instead of y squared i'm going to put minus 4x squared plus 18 equals 0. Now this is an equation just in x. When I solve this, I'll find the x values where the gradient is equal to 0. So I've got 2x squared minus 4x squared minus 16x squared plus 18 equals 0. Okay, so that gives me minus 20. Uh, 4, that gives me minus 22x squared plus 18 equals 0. Let's make sure that's minus... Is that right? No, it's not minus 22. What am I talking about? <coughs> Sorry about that. 2x squared minus 4x squared is minus 2x. That's minus 18x squared plus 18 equals 0. So we can say 18x squared is equal to 18. So x squared is equal to 1. So x is equal to plus or minus 1. Okay, so when x equals 1... When x equals 1, y is equal to minus 4 times 1, which is minus 4. So that's 1.1, 1. 1, negative 4. And when x equals negative 1, y is equal to negative 4 times negative 1, which is equal to 4. So the other point is negative 1, 4. So if they find the, find the coordinates of the points, yeah. So therefore, you've got 1 minus 4 and minus 1, 4. Okay, our points where the tangent is parallel to the x-axis. Okay, so there's the answer to this question, seven. Um, okay, eight marks for that question. All right, so there's the answer to that question. Okay, now, supposing the question said instead of parallel to the x-axis parallel to the y-axis okay in that case you would proceed but at this point if it's parallel to the y-axis that means it's a line that's vertical and when you have a vertical line then the, you know if you find the gradient of it you've got the change in y over the change in x well you're going to have something over zero the change in x will be equal to zero when it's parallel to the y-axis. Okay, so for example, if you had two points here, for example, supposing this was the point um, 3, 4, and this was the point 3, 2. If you, tried to find, uh, if you tried to find the gradient of this, okay, the change in y would be 4 minus 2 over 3 minus 3, so it would be 2 over 0. The denominator would be 0. That's why it's, it's undefined, basically. All right, so it's a vertical line. So if that was the case, then what we would do is we would take the denominator and you'd make that equal to zero. So you'd say 2y minus x equals zero. And then you would solve the equation using this. And then you'd substitute this into this. <laughs> so for example, I could say x equals 2y. Replace the x with 2y and continue. All right, or y equals uh, half x. Replace the y with half x and I'll get the coordinates. So that's not this question but i'm saying supposing the question said parallel to the y-axis then we know that when you've got something parallel to the y-axis the gradient is not equal to zero it's undefined what makes something undefined when the denominator of it is zero so you take this part and make it equal to zero and use that to solve the equation and then you would find uh, you know the points accordingly that's where the gradient of this the tangent to the curve would be parallel to the y-axis okay that's a little side point there that might be useful for some of you in certain questions that does come up sometimes all right so that's the end of this question other questions from this particular um um solomon paper solomon f from the c4 p4 can be found in the playlist that should appear over here other questions from differentiation of p4 can be found in this playlist you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link um uh, other questions i guess from this 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 Endotopic Worksheet number 5 I'll put in this playlist over here as well. Uh, thank you for watching and see you soon.